Welcome back to John's Films. Today we're looking at DaVinci Resolve and the multicam features. The channel is typically a performance benchmark and tip channel. Today's a tip. Let's check it out. I'll start in the media tab, browsing my hard drive looking for footage that I'm going to add. You can see here I've got my multicam footage. I've shot four different angles of the same scene. I'm throwing the ball with the dog, and you'll see I've shot GH5, a DJI action camera, iPad, and then an iPhone. The iPhone I tilted vertically first and then rotated horizontally, uh, so that it looks like it's off, but we'll fix that in post here. All right, let's uh, get these items that I'm going to multi to, uh, so I add it to my media pool, and here in the media pool, all of them exist. I can either right click and then create a new multi cam clip using select clips. I'll do that. It asks me a few options. Now this gets interesting. So my frame rate for this footage is 30 frames a second. My starting time code, well, I didn't time code them, meaning I did not sync the camera's internal time codes prior to filming. Instead, what I'm telling it is I'd like you to use sound. So look at the sound waves. And, and I had a trick when I was filming this, I'll show you in a minute. But effectively, use the sound waves that you've gathered so that you can uh, sync up the clips. The other options are place an in point and, or an out point, which tells me I turned all the cameras on at the same time or all of them off. You would have to go set the in and out, however, uh, specifically to um, in and outs that you set on each of the individual clips. Use the time code, like I was saying, that's been embedded in the footage, or use markers as you mark it across the footage. The next option here is to move source clips to the original clips bin. Uh, that says, I want you to take the real four clips and put them into a, a bin so that I don't have to look through them all the time. And the last thing, let's see, clip name. What do you want to name it? Well, I've got the clips named after each of my sources, so I'd like you to use the clip name because the metadata on all of them doesn't necessarily have, and those are your options, you can use the metadata. It's not necessarily in each of these clips, or just sequentially. Clip 1, clip 2, clip 3, clip 4. I'm going to use clip name. You can let it check clips from the same camera, in which case it would use metadata to determine these are from the same camera and put them on the same track in your editing timeline. All right, I click create, and now I have a bin of the original clips, and I have one multicam track. Due to personal preference, I've jumped to the Edit tab. You've got your multicam, uh, multicam now that you've created it back in your media page. You could have created it here as well. I drag it down into a timeline. It's important you do this step first. Uh, the next thing we need to do is enable the uh, stacked timelines view. And you can see here I've got a tab with timeline one. I'll right click on multi multicam and say open in timeline. So here we are with a separate secondary timeline that represents each of these clips. Why did I do it that way? Well, I'd like to color each of these clips so that uh, they color match because right now it's all over the board. I've got iPhone, iPad, extremely saturated, thin footage. I've got a GH5 with a flatter profile on it. Uh, they just don't, flat don't match. So you would color grade these, or I should say color correct these, so that the cameras would come close to matching. I'm not going to spend all the time to do that at the moment, but what I will do is click the auto color. I have a video on autocolor if you haven't seen it yet so that you can get an idea of what it looks like uh, before and after. And I will color these with the autocolor. Notice here I've chosen to autocolor and it corrected it one way. But if I zoom ahead to where I actually have the camera set up and I autocolor again, there we go. Much better white balance, much better tone to it. Now that I've colored my footage, I can close that multicam timeline. 
I'm extremely particular about this sequence because if you were to open in timeline in the stacked view of all four of the source footage to start without dragging the multicam down into a timeline, you end up making color corrections that do not translate into the multicam footage that you add to your timeline later. So it's very, very particular. First step, drag this into a timeline. Step two, right click on it, open in timeline, which again is the stacked mode, make your color corrections, and then close that timeline and come back here. And now your color corrections exist inside your multicam that's already in a timeline. Now we get to the magic. Here's what we get to do now that we've created a multicam timeline. I can, on the viewer, source viewer, come down and select multicam here in my viewer options. It then gives me four boxes, and I can choose to go between one by one, which is just each of the individual ones, one by two on the sources, and you'll see why I named the clips after the sources four by four. In this case, I have four source clips, so I'll choose two by two, two by two, and I can see all four of them inside the window at the same time. Now, as I drag through the footage, you'll see, and you'll notice I turned on the DJI action camera first, then the GH5, then the iPhone. I think I actually had the iPad on first. Ah, that's right. You may recall when I was coloring the footage here. We'll open this in timeline, get the stack view. You may recall I turned off, there we go, the iPad so that I could see through to the other ones and color correct them. That was an interesting catch uh, because now that I had done that, I wasn't able to see the iPad so in the source multiviewer. Um, that's something that might trip you up if you don't realize you had done that because you were trying to color things below it. There we go. But now that I went back into the multicam in the stacked timeline and enabled it again, I was able to see it back in my source. So I turned on the iPad first, then I turned on the DJI action camera, then I turned on the GH5, and then the iPhone right after that. This is a uh, interesting view, and what I need to do is go to where I want to start my story. And I'll start the story about the time I get three cameras on, I think. There we go. Now I've got three cameras on, so I don't need any of this. Remember, Resolve has synced this based on the audio signals that it gave me. So something I did when I was setting it up for filming, I put all the four cameras close to each other and made a few sounds, flaps and whatnot, so that Re Resolve would have an easy time syncing it up with the sound waves. Then I took each of the cameras, and you can see me walk them back to the location that I was going to film them from. Here's where the magic happens. I've got my multicam section. I'm going to start playing through it by pressing the space bar. Right now, you'll notice I have the action camera selected, which is what it's adding to the timeline. If I want to, I can click on the other camera angles. Notice it put a cut down here. I'll zoom in on it. It put a cut in there right when I clicked and selected a different source. Now, for my story, I don't actually want to show that. That's not a good spot. Or I miss the transition just a second. I can drag this back, and it will turn into my viewer. I can see uh, both frames, both sources, the one I came from and the one I'm going to. And I can see how they change over time. Notice the iPad's stationary, so you don't really see the change. As it is, I'm going to take that cut out. There we go. And we're back in our time. I'm going to zoom ahead to the point where I bring the cameras together. Here we go. And I'll start our story there. So I have three of the cameras on. I'm about to turn the fourth camera on, and I'm bringing them close together. Now again, I press play. I'm going to select the iPad. I think, I think that's cool. I'm walking into it. 
and then you can get a view of me looking at the dog with my action camera. I'm making some noises so that I can get them grouped together. There we go, clip, clip, clip. And I'm now going to grab the camera, turn around. I like the shot with the lens in it up here. Going back, now I want to see me making the GH5 get stationary in its position. There we go, I'm walking. Let's get a view of me walking over here. Get some action cam off my head. Get down here, I'm just about to place the camera. So I will select the iPhone as it's getting placed. Now I'm gonna turn around with the iPad because it's got a view of me walking back. The action camera, see the dog walking in. I now grab back there. Here we are up in this shot so you can see me throw it. See the dogs run iPhone, you see the other dog run up behind him. So this is how uh, you can very easily set up multi-camera. And did I get each of those transitions exactly perfect? No, I didn't. But I got it so close that now all I have to do is some minor tweaking. Now this is something I should have done in the other timeline. So let's go back, see if we can correct it and have it come across. This is the footage for the iPhone. And you see one of the problems with it is that it's rotated. So if I go into my inspector, I know it's about 1.8 cropped at the moment. And I need this to go to negative 90. And now I've got my full footage. All right. So let's go back to our original timeline. And it is now corrected. That's the beauty of the sequence that we just put it through. The sequence being add the multicam by dragging it into a timeline first then right click it open in a new timeline and you have the ability to make changes to that new timeline the stacked timeline here that then refer themselves back to the individual clips spread across the multi camera um, without having to do it individually shot by shot in the multi camera that is the only sequence that works if you right click this open it first uh, your your changes get lost it doesn't work so here we are as we're continuing through set up that camera Get a good walk shot with me and the dog. Now you see the dog coming up. Grabbing. Throwing. Dog's running. Good little dog. You see the iPhone. I like those cuts. Um, Might have changed one or two on the walkthrough, but that was pretty darn good. So this is how you use DaVinci Resolve's multi-camera approach. Uh, the magic here, they're now using the Neural Engine in 16 to sync the audio clips. Um, if you needed to change those or anything, you can do that uh, in the stacked timeline. You could use your, your comma, your period to nudge it back and forth. You could drag and, and change entirely. But um, the massive trick here, the thing you gotta do is make sure you open these in the right order so that you don't mess it up. If you do, you'll notice that the changes that you make in your stacked timeline don't reflect back into the timeline that you've got your multicam cuts in and then you're in for a mess. Clearly, Blackmagic Designs put a lot of money into DaVinci Resolve 16. The neural engine makes the matchup perfect with the multicam, at least in my use, and I look forward to seeing what else they can do with it in the future. Thanks for watching John's Films. Subscribe if you aren't already subscribed, and have a great day. Thanks.